Okay, so in the previous lecture, I said that we talked about solar thermal, and this was a case where we just take sunlight and using our standard steam, uh, steam power plant, we use the sunlight to heat the water to power, make electricity. And in the southwest of the U.S., desert, lots of sunlight every, 300 days of sunlight every year, uh, sunshine, um, it's a perfect environment to generate electricity from the sun. And once again, it's solar thermo, so we can have a huge capacity of hot water that we can store so that we can deliver that whenever we want to. And that gives us the ability to save heat and deliver at peak time all the way over on the East Coast. So we can put that, that huge amount of, of hot water to work whenever we want to. So now the challenge is, we have two challenges. One is we've got to get this stuff to the East Coast. And two, we've got to get cooling water in the desert. And the first one, let's talk about getting that stuff to the East Coast. Okay, now I haven't been, I haven't had a lot of details about uh, the type of voltages that we're using, but there are two types. One is called AC, alternating current, and one is called DC. Now you might know the band name AC, DC, and that's where they get their name. Okay, alternating current is what is in your house. And it's, it is, if you look at it on an oscilloscope, which is a device that looks at voltages, this is a time, this is time going this way, so this here is a sixtieth of a second, right here. And so in your house, your lights are actually flickering. They're going on and off 60 times a second, but your eyes can't see it because we can't perceive things faster than 24 frames a second, which is what motion pictures run at. So the, your house current goes going back and forth, back and forth, and this is called a sine wave. And it is this shape, this ability to go back and forth in the voltage, so flowing back and forth, the reason that we that's important is when we built our transformer and we had 10 times as many windings on one side and we took a thousand volts on one side of the transformer and cranked it up to 10,000 on the other and, and accordingly the amperage went from 10 amps 10 to 1 we had 10,000 watts on one side and 10,000 watts on the other and what's happening is the magnetic field that's generated by these windings is changing. It's going back and forth. And it's the changing of the magnetic field that causes these other wires to start to flow their current back and forth. Now the difference here, or the challenges with DC, let's jump over to a battery. Here's a car battery. It's at 12 volts. And in this case, all the electrons, they just flow in one direction. That's it. They don't oscillate, they just go back, they just go from the battery straight through the starter motor and back. And the difference being this one, the electrons are flowing back and forth. And the reason that DC is a challenge in the uh, electrical grid is that it doesn't go across transformers directly. You have to build a chopper circuit where you actually make the DC look it chops it up and makes it look like a square wave. And then when you send this over to the transformer, the transformer is seeing the magnetic field changing and it works. So if you, if you build a special device that takes DC and chops it into something that looks like this, which is called a square wave, it will go across the transformer. So now that we have the ability to take a, volt, a, a voltage or a DC voltage, and put it across a transformer, what might be the value of this? Well, there are three things that are interesting about high voltage DC. The first one is that when I said a long time ago that we were going to build a hair dryer or a power um, a heater in a house, I said we had 120 volts in the house, we could run it at 10 amps, and that would be 1200 watts. And I, I just said, this is what the voltage is in your house. Well, that's an approximation. That's down here. Your house actually goes up to 170. Now the average, if we were to take these peaks and fill it in and add it all together, the average is 120. So we really don't, 
It's not a constant DC 120, it's an oscillating, alternating current voltage that goes up to 170. Now, why is this important? When you're building a high, an HVAC tower, big one, and you've got the wires, the gauge of the wires, and the isolators, you've got to build it for 170, okay? But you're really only getting 120 volts of power through it because you've got to plan for the highest voltage. So now, imagine you come along and you want to run DC through it. You go, hey, check this out. I can run the whole thing at 170. The system's designed to go to 170, so I'll just, I'm going to put 170 on there. Might as well. I don't have, it's designed for 170, it'll work at 170. And now you've got 170 volts on the same exact wires that before you can only put 120 on. Well, if we do a little bit of math, that gives you twice the power carrying capability because things are to the squared power and all this I squared R. But just this bump from 120 to 170 is significant. So now you're able to punch, push twice as much power down the line per, you know, per loss. The loss is now half just because of this bump from 120 to 170. Well, that's the first thing that's important, okay? Now the next thing that's important in HVDC is that when we have these power lines and they go a long way, like a thousand miles, I said that there was resistance in there. We had two ohms per mile, and in our example, we had 20 ohms on a 10 mile run. But this, that's resistance, kind of like the, the rocks going over a waterfall. But electricity is a little bit more complicated, and it has a thing called a capac capacitance, which is kind of like a little bucket. And not only do you have rocks in the way, but you have this little bucket. So if you're going along and you're alternating back and forth at 60 times a second, you're having to, before the voltage actually builds, you've got to put water into the bucket this way, and then, then the voltage can go. And then going the other way, you've got to empty the bucket and then put voltage in this way. And this is all called capacitance. And it's not a big deal on short runs, but it's something that alternating current constantly has to fight. It's just this, not only does it fight resistance, but it has to fight this desire to fill this thing up like a bucket. And it's just a little bit of waste, but on long runs, it works against you. DC, you fill the bucket once, <laughs> that's it. It just has no, it doesn't even see the capacity. It's like, I filled it, I'm going this way. So all the electrons go in there and they don't have to go back and forth. So here we have an advantage. We got it at 170 volts. So we've got twice the, half their loss in energy. We've got our power. We've got no capacitance issues. Look out, look out, Godzilla. And the last one is, the, if you want to have your power out here in the Mojave sync up to Boston, you have to make sure that these signals are exactly in phase. Phase just means just like you know being in phase with a person. If you're out here in the Mojave, let's just say that because of a different arrangement, a different hookup, that the signal in Boston is going like this. It, it's is a little bit of a time delay because it's way across the country, or it's on a different circuit. You can't line these up. You cannot take electricity from Mojave and hook it up to Boston because they're not perfectly aligned. Well, ta-da, with DC, we just build the chopper circuit and make sure that the stuff, when we deliver it in this constant stream, and then the chopper circuit, when it gets to Boston, it takes it apart and puts it right on top of the, of the, the way the current or the voltage is operating in Boston. So when you're trying to hook up different AC networks, different networks, you can, you can just do it exactly the way you want. Let's take a, an example of putting this stuff in the Sahara and putting it in Spain, France, England. They're on different, vo they're on different voltages and frequencies. Or some are on 50 hertz, some are at 60. It's a mess over there. DC, send it over, chop it, fit it perfectly. Three reasons. Higher voltage, no capacitance problems, and synchronizing your AC networks. That's why we're going to go HVDC and power the whole world with solar thermal. That's it.